Finally, let's talk about nested for loops. So one loop can be inside of another, and that's what we call nested loops. And we need to use different counter variables for each loop. So here's an example. So we have for loop that starts, that uses i as the loop counter, that starts from 1 to 3, and that makes three loops. And inside that, we have another for loop that uses j as the loop counter, and that also goes from 1 to 3, and that's three loops as well. So inside the uh, second loop, we have a print length statement that prints both i and j in every pass. So the output of this will look like when, uh, when the first loop passes, i is 1 and j is 1, and then j will continue because uh, it is a loop. When i was one, is 1, j will go to 2, 3, and then we're done with this uh, inner loop. When we go back to the, this loop, and we increase i here to 2. When i is 2, j starts over. So for i2, j will be 1. For i2, j will be 2, and then 3. And finally, for the last pass of i, when it's 3, j will start over again from 1, 2, and 3. So total, this will look three times. So if you want to know how many times that the uh, in this case the sprint loop will work is the number of this loop times the number of this loop. So uh, let's let's use this in an example. So here I have a uh, again a blank Java file. I'm gonna save this as nested loop of Java. So I'm gonna paste the same code, and I'm gonna correct indent, correct the indentations. Here we go. So let's run this and then see uh, what happens now. Here we go. Exactly what I saw, what we saw in the example. For every i counter, j will go from one to three, basically. This will start all over. So we can go ahead and change this, let's say, to 5, and this to 5. This time, it will not be 9 outputs, but it will be uh, 25. So let's change this one too. This is called outer loop, and this is called inner loop. Okay, so for every outer loop, inner loop will go from start to finish. So let's read on this. Go. So that's 25. You can see for every i, j starts from 1 to 5. For the last value of i, j again starts from 1 to 5. So we can go ahead and change, make a one final change here. We can have 1, we can have j depend on i, which means in each uh, j loop, it will start from 1, go all the way to the value of i. And notice that the value of i will change as well. So this will be an interesting to see. Um, recompile and run again. Here we go. For when i was 1, j is 1. And that's it. That's the end of the first pass. When i is 2, j will go from 1 to 2. When i is 3, j will go from 1 to 3. When i is 4, j will go from 1 to 4. And finally, when i is 5, J will go from 1 to 5.